what port does HTTP normally talk across? 80. Port 80. So let's do uh, TCP dot port equals equals 80, and that way I only see web traffic. That would be another example of uh, a way you could uh, do a filter. Um, let's see. Another thing you can do is if you want to look around for a password and they didn't do any kind of obfuscation to it, it's possible you can go up into edit, find the packet, and look for a known string. Like, um, I could, what? Sword. Sword? That's like swordfish? What? That's a shorter version of password. Oh, that's, actually, yeah, you're right. It works. Yeah, look for the word password or sword or um, so off. Some people capitalize the piece so and just leave off the first one. Yeah. Or actually, you know, if you only have an account box, if you want to figure out how protocol works, if it's application you control and you're trying to figure out how secure it is, search for your own password in this. Although this wouldn't work in this particular case because the password is obfuscated. But I'm going to go ahead and search for uh, off. And I'm choosing string. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and find. And uh, if I look down here, it did find a packet that had that particular string in it. Here's the raw hex dump of it, the uh, uh, character equivalents. And if I go down here and drill through it, I can see someplace or another in here the password. Oh, that's what the server sent to me. I actually have to go look at the next packet and see what I sent to it. So let me go into uh, a couple more packets down. Well, at some point I must send it to it. All right, let me uh, do another search there. Oh, there we go. I finally found the packet where I sent mine. This packet, you see, is coming from me to the server, and Wireshark already breaks it out for me. It basically finds this little obfuscated version, and it sees that the credential I used, it automatically uh, obfuscates it for me, and it says bad pass. Now, that's doing it by hand in Wireshark, and you'll want to do that for unknown protocols. Wireshark is just a super, super useful tool. However, while I was doing all that, I had Kane running in the background, and uh, if it's a common protocol, more than likely, it's going to grab it. And as you can see, apparently I mistyped my username as use once. And right there, you'll see it. And uh, you'll see where it automatically extracted it from the password dump. Uh, it automatically extracted it from the uh, network stream for me. How did you start that to run? Oh, to start that to run, basically what I did was I first went to configure and made sure it had the right interface. Then I said, okay. Uh, to do alt poisoning, it gets more complicated. And that's probably how to scope the class, but you can do alt poisoning to get everybody's traffic on the network coming to you. Then from there, I said, start sniffing and using this little icon. And you can see it, it does FTP, HTTP, IMAP, LDAP, a bunch of different protocols. Um, and there's my password. Another nice thing you can do is uh, if you have only a PDA with you, if it's a PDA that supports... Uh, Packet capture, like let's say um, uh, I have an Nokia N810. You can sit there in monitor mode or something, grab passwords. You have to do some messing around with the PCAP file it makes. But then after you uh, do some messing around with the PCAP file you, that you grab with that, you can go back home and actually uh, open up a file, a PCAP file, and uh, use Kane or some other tool to extract files out of it or extract passwords out of it and so forth. So if someone wanted to be surreptitious, they could take one of these PDAs. Actually, does the Evo... Oh, he's, he left. Do you know if Evo uh, supports uh, monitor mode? Or I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Or you could be walking around... Yeah, yes? Oh, what is the question? If you were in Linux, could you use like a TCP dump to be able to extract Yes, you could. You could use TCP dump. Pretty much anything you can do in Wireshark, you can do in TCP dump if you can figure out the right commands. <laughs> what? Yeah. And, and it's the same dump format. It's still that you know libpcap dump format. So yes, you could sit there, dump everything with TCP dump, take it home, then throw it through a bunch of tools like Kane, Wireshark, uh, Network Miner, 
I, I sat there with dumps and like dumped a ton of data, then took it home, looked at it in Network Miner to extract files out of it, which is a useful thing to do. Evo, can you do monitor mode? The Evo phone? Yes. Um, I haven't got that far because I think it's the same chipset as the uh, N900, but it, which is what it says in the specifications, but the Android developers that I've asked say that it's not the same somehow. So, so, so I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. The I'll, specifications say it's the same. I was mentioning, why don't you come up here with close that to get you audio? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, don't have to. you don't have to, you don't want to. Uh, uh, I was talking about the idea of walking around the PDA, capturing all the data in monitor mode, then taking it back home to look at it this way. It can be done with the N900. For a place where you've been legitimately hired to pen test. So it can be done with the N900. Uh, and I have the N810 and I've done stuff like that, for the 8 gig SD card. So it depends on what you got. Um, but that's a simple intro to those sniffers and uh, grabbing passwords. Nice and simple. Windows, Sam I am. And I'm going to start talking about hashes after this, but to really understand hashes and how hashes work, I really want you all to see Alex and Martin's presentation. And since we're so close to when I said I was going to set lunchtime at 12.30, let's go ahead and uh, get back here at about 1.20. Does that sound good? Everybody get back here at 1.20 and... Uh, we will continue.